One of the best feelings as a developer is writing really performant, highly optimized code that's clean, easy to read, easy to write, and just works flawlessly. The only thing that actually trumps that is pushing out production code and seeing your project finished and used by others. The problem though is that we spend way too much time on the refactoring portion and then we maybe never even get to the point where we actually deploy our code. This is a problem I used to have all the time and even when I worked at a company, I would waste tens and thousands of their dollars and months of my time working on refactorings that were not needed at all. So in this video, I'm going to share with you a story of how I wasted tons of time and money and also give you some tips to avoid those same problems. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And I wanna start this video with a bit of a story. So we're gonna go all the way back to my very first full-time developer job. I was a full stack developer working in Ruby on Rails on the back end and doing like React JavaScript on the front end, but it was fairly Ruby on Rails heavy. I would say there was not as much JavaScript and React as there was Ruby on Rails. So I was working on this and I was at an agency and at this agency, we were broken apart into different projects and it was a relatively small agency. So the project I was working on, I was the only developer on that project. And I was actually taking over that project for someone that was planning on leaving the company soon. So there was a small period where we were working on the project together and then I was taking over the project full time on my own and I was the only developer on that project. Now this project wasn't super new, but it also wasn't super old. It had maybe been around for a couple years at this point and the whole idea of the product was to help out farmers by seeing more data around information in their field. So for example, you could check soil moisture at different depths to determine when you needed to irrigate, or you could see the position of your pivot to determine where it's at for irrigation, just random stuff like that to help them with tracking. Same thing with like GPS and stuff like that. Now, at the beginning, this product was very simple. It tracked maybe one thing, soil moisture, and you only used a couple different devices. But as the years and months went on, they started to add more and more features, more devices, more data that needed to be tracked. So all this information needed to get shoved up into a database, stored, and then shown on the UI. And at the very beginning, this was pretty easy. There was one device, so a lot of stuff was, you know, relatively hard-coded for this one specific device. And they added a new device that tracked different data. So they kind of had some if or kind of checks inside of here, do this or do that kind of situation. And then they added another device and another device and another device. And eventually it just became a massive match of like if else switch statements all over the place, trying to handle all these different scenarios. And overall, it was just a huge mess to work in. And this is just kind of how the system was built. It just kind of got slowly built on top of each other and no one really spent the time to go back and refactor it because there was constantly new features needing to be pushed and there was new things that needed to be fixed that bugs that came up and so on. So when I took over this project, I spent a couple months working on it and then I realized that all of this old code, this legacy way of doing things, it was really slowing me down, making my life more difficult, adding more bugs. Overall, it was just not a good experience. So I said, you know what, I'm gonna refactor this. It'll probably only take me a couple weeks, maybe a month at most, that I'll spend refactoring this, and then my life will be so much easier after that. I guarantee you've probably thought the exact same thing about your code or a project you've worked on in the past. So I started doing some refactoring, and I had some downtime in between new features, so it wasn't really straining me too much. And then all of a sudden, new feature requests came in after maybe a week or two. So I had to work on those new feature requests, but of course the refactor wasn't done yet, so I had to do this on two separate branches, one with the current code that was working with the new features, and one with the new refactored version that was going to be way better. So I'd have to kind of do both of these things in parallel. So I added a new feature, went back to do some refactoring, add a new feature, go back to do some refactoring. And then as I was going through my refactoring, I started to get to the point maybe a month in where I was like, hey, I'm almost done. This is coming along really well. So I was like, great, I can't wait to push this into production and actually start using it. And then I realized, oh, I didn't think about this scenario or this scenario or this scenario or this scenario. And all of a sudden, what I thought was going to be just a couple weeks of refactoring work was something that was going to take me months and months and months. So I spent an incredible amount of time on this refactor trying to clean things up. And as I was going, I started thinking, you know what? I did this one way, but now I should probably do it another way. So I'd refactor my refactor and it just became an endless loop of trying to make the code cleaner and better and more optimized and more refactored and easier to use. And this was a horrible experience to work in and to actually push production code because now my time was split between working on the real version of the application and this new imagined refactored version. The craziest part is I didn't even finish the full refactor before I left the company to start doing YouTube full time. I was like 95% of the way through the refactor. There was almost nothing left, which was great, but I didn't even get to see the actual benefits of the refactor if there were any. And to be honest, I spent quite a bit of time working in the refactored code and all those problems I was trying to fix, I did fix, which was great. 
but my new version had introduced more problems that were similar. So I thought I was going to be saving a bunch of time, but really my code was different, but still introduced lots of problems and had lots of the same issues as before. It was just different issues than what were there before, but it still slowed me down in a very similar way. Now, hopefully this is not an experience that you've been in and hopefully something that you don't ever want to be in. So how can you avoid falling into that situation? Well, the very first thing you can do is just don't refactor at all. Never refactor, you'll never run into that situation. But this is obviously very bad advice because eventually code needs to be updated and changed to make better because what you thought would work 10 years ago obviously is probably going to be completely different from what works now. So as your vision of the product evolves, you should do refactoring to make sure things work in line with what the new version of the product is. But this is something you should try to do iteratively. Instead of doing an overall massive refactor like I did where you essentially rewrite the entire code base, try to refactor small bits at a time. This is especially helpful if you try to do it as you add new features. Now I know this is really hard because there's lots of deadlines and time crunches inside of real world projects, but if you can make small refactors as you go that make the code overall cleaner, it's going to be a great way to make sure your code base is overall going to be at a good level without having to eventually go back into a massive overhaul like I did. One kind of rule that people like to say is that if you modify a file in your code base, you should always try to leave it better off than it was before. So instead of making your code messier and harder to read by just adding things and never improving the things that exist, you're going to go in and modify code in a file, try to maybe clean up the code a little bit, make some of the code a little bit easier to read, especially if there's been a bunch of band-aid fixes on it, maybe try to streamline that and make it work a little bit better. This isn't always possible, but if you can make even 1% improvements every time you go back to a file, eventually that file is going to be essentially the perfect version of what it should be. Now the next tip is to realize that there's no such thing as perfect code. I know I said you can get to essentially perfect code by constantly making iterations to it, but there's no such thing as perfect code. There's always going to be things that are hacky or not quite like you would like them to be because that's how the real world is. The real world is messy. There's complicated situations you need to code for. So making sure you put those into your code means that there's guaranteed going to be code that's not super clean and easy to work with. So just accepting this and knowing that your code won't be perfect is going to be the first step to making sure you don't over refactor. Because if you see code that has one problem in it, you think, oh, I failed. I need to fix this one problem. You'll fix that problem. And then you'll realize now there's a new problem. There's always going to be something wrong with the code that doesn't make it perfect. So just make sure you can accept that and make the code as good as you can, but know that there's probably going to be some type of cutoff point. You've probably heard of like the 80-20 principle where you can do 20% of the work to get 80% of the results and then the other 20% of the results take a full 80% more work. That's kind of the same idea with clean code. You can get your code relatively clean, you know, 80% as good as it can be with only 20% of your actual work. Well, if you wanted to finish off that last 20% to go from 80 to 100, it's going to require four to five times as much work as getting to that 80%. So generally trying to get to that like 80% good enough quality is where you want to be. Now this final tip I want to give you really only works if you have someone else that you're working with, but try to bounce your code ideas off of them or do code reviews with your code. If you have someone to show your code ideas to and to make sure that they're referencing and reviewing your code before you actually submit it to the code base, that's going to be a really great way to be able to check your code and make sure you're making it at least as clean as it was before, if not cleaner and easier to use than before. Because if you're making things a lot more difficult to read and understand and work with, these developers that are reviewing your code are going to see that and they're going to question, hey, why are you making this harder than it was? Maybe you need to because the actual feature being implemented just adds extra complexity. That's fine. But maybe you're kind of hacking around and trying to save a few minutes here and there. So you're just making it a little bit easier, not as good as it could be. And they'll call you out for that and help you to improve your code. Another reason why working with other developers is great, because if you mention, hey, I want to do a massive overhaul refactor of this code base, they may look at you and be like, hey, that's going to take, you know, months or weeks or years of time to complete. We don't have the time or the energy or the bandwidth to do that. It's just not worth it. So you may have this really cool idea to make these overarching changes, but hopefully if you have multiple people on your team, other people on your team will see that and be like, hey, maybe that's not a super good idea right now. So if you get an idea where you want to do all this crazy refactoring, they can help you evaluate if it's actually worth doing that or if it's maybe something that you really don't want to do right now. Now, I know I've talked pretty badly about refactoring throughout this video, but writing clean and well-maintainable code is probably one of the best things you can do for your code base. And if you want to learn how to write cleaner code at the start so you don't have to go through a bunch of refactors, I highly recommend checking out some of my videos on clean code. They'll be linked right over here. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.